Okay guys, who likes big blocks? How about a 496 stroker? How about NA, nitrous, a roots blower, and a pro charger? Now all that's not gonna fit in one video, it's gonna be a series, so let's get started. In this video, we'll cover the buildup and dyno test of a nitrous injected 496 big block. That's right, it's a segment I'm calling 10 minute tech. Everybody has 10 minutes, right? Especially to learn about a big block Chevy with nitrous. Now in this buildup, I put together a 496 stroker. For guys that don't know what that is, we took a Gen 6 454 from the wrecking yard, bored it 60 over, and installed a, four, a 4250 stroke crank. And there's something important I want to mention about this. Throughout the years, we've all been taught the same thing. If you're going to build a performance big block, it has to have three things. It has to have four bolt mains, it has to have a steel crank, and it has to have rec board heads. From the very beginning, we were all taught that. But the reality is, it doesn't need any of those things. Now I prefer a four bolt block when I go to the wrecking yard, the Gen 5 and the Gen 6, Gen 6 F all come that way. So I, I grab those, but I've made plenty of power on two bolt blocks. I mean, we're talking four digit power level stuff. Not, not like pro mod stuff, but we're talking about 1,100 horsepower and it works just fine. And the same thing with cast cranks. Now I've never broken a cast crank under power. I don't even know anybody who has. I'm not saying it hasn't been done. I'm just saying when guys break cranks, it's usually because of something else. They hydrolocked it, they broke a rod or broke a piston because they stuck the ring land and then that caused catastrophic failure, but they didn't break the crank because of power. Now I've made 1300 horsepower and, and 1000 horsepower stuff all day long on cast cranks and never hurt anything. And we're, and we're not talking about one hero run, we're talking about 50 or 60 runs all at over a thousand horsepower from this junkyard stuff. So it just goes to show you if the tune's right and everything's there, cast cranks work really good. Especially like the 9000 series scat stuff, that stuff works great. So on this 496, I put together this combination. So we got a stroker, we topped it with good heads, put a reasonable camshaft in it, and a good induction system. And on this combination, what I wanted to build was what I call a multi-purpose motor. If I was just going to make it like an all-motor deal and just go drag race it, it would have more camshaft, more compression, a wilder induction system, maybe a tunnel run, maybe a dry stuff, we'd rev it to the moon, but that's a single purpose motor. On this 496, what I wanted to do is make a multi-purpose deal that I could add power adders to. So I wanted a street strip motor you could drive around, daily driver, and you could make a ton of power with. Because this thing made over 650 horsepower, which is enough to put any good chassis well into the nines. And the only, buddy, the only guy that's going to complain about a 9 second car is a guy that wants an 8 second car. But we're going to show you how to do that too, with a little bit of nitrous. And then in the next video, we'll show you what happens when we add boost. So here we go, 496, let's get into the specifics, get into the dyno testing, find out what happens. Now we can get into the specifics of our 496 buildup. So I went to the wrecking yard and picked up a big block core motor. Turned out to be a Gen 5, but that's okay. It was still a four bolt main and it was easy to work with. So we bored that thing 60 over and installed a stroker assembly. Now our stroker assembly included a SCAT 9000 series cast crank 4250 stroke. And then we combined that with forged internals from CP Carrillo. We used their bullet series stuff. So we used the bullet series rod and combined that with a forged piston. Now the forged piston was your standard kind of small dome, you know, in the 20 to 22 cc range with enough valve clearance or uh, valve relief so that we could run a decent sized cam, even though the cam we installed was fairly small. So speaking of cams, we chose a BR300 cam from Comp Cams. Now this solid roller, but it's a mild solid roller, is actually designed for a blower application, but it works well as an NA motor. And besides, I was gonna run boost on this thing later on. I'll put the specs up here, and as you can see, it's not super aggressive. That's why you can run it every day as a daily driver, and it works just fine. Just make sure to check the valve lash every once in a while. So we combine that short block assembly with ARP head studs and, and uh, Felpro gaskets, and then we installed a set of Promax 355 CNC heads. So you might be asking, why such a big head? Well, turns out it was just a head that we had left over from other projects. So it was sitting on the shelf. We already had them and they were available. We'd run them on both a 572 and a 565 and they work very well. They flow a ton and they make a lot of power. It's actually more head than this 496 used, but like I said, that's what we had, so that's what we used. So we topped that off with an Edelbrock Super Victor intake with a 4500 series uh, carb flange and a 1050 Dominator. Again, this mild combination on the 496 doesn't really need a Dominator, but let's face it, it's a big block. What looks better on a big block than a Dominator? 
So I put this combination together, got it up on the dyno, broke it in, and then we ran it. So let's hear this baby run and find out how much power it made. You know, I really like the sound of the motor running at wide open throttle at full steam on the dyno. Nothing sounds better and this big block is no exception. I mean, this is our 496. This is the power curve produced. As you can see, we started at about 4,000 RPM and ran it out to 6,500. The peak power is starting to fall off there, so we could run it higher than that if we want, but you can see the power curve would start to tail off and, and trail away. That's just where the, this thing made peak power. You know, that BR300 cam was kind of a mild cam, so we wouldn't expect it to really rev much higher than that, even with a good single plane intake like we're using on that Super Victor. And we had plenty of head flow. So if you put a cam in this, it's like a 278 or 284 or something like that, at 50, like a, a 280, 296 cam, it, it could make some serious power. It could really rev up there. But obviously, it would, it would want the compression and all that stuff to go along with it. So this is our power curve, and you can see equipped with all of the combinations that we talked about when we were going over the motor. This thing produced 676.5 horsepower at 6400 RPM and a peak torque of 589.7, so we'll call that 590 foot-pounds. The thing I want you to notice about this is take a look at how flat the torque curve is. And this is what I was talking about, a combination not just being about peak power. It's about the average power production. So if you stick your foot in this, and we didn't run it any lower than this when we were running the dyno testing, but it would certainly run plenty, much lower than this. When we're running on the dyno, we like to select a, an RPM range that where the dyno will read this thing accurately. It'll go about 3,500 RPM on a stretch. It might go 4,000 RPM in, in terms of being a sweep. That's, where the, that's kind of the sweet spot for the dyno. So this made life easy but we got a nice flat torque curve with this big block. So what that means is like, as we've come, been, uh, come to get used to on a big block, there's always plenty of torque <laughs> available and this 496 was no exception. So good average power, good peak power on the big block on the 496. And remember, this is a 10 to one motor. This is all pump gas. This thing ran best with about 38 degrees of timing. Whenever we run these on the dyno, we go through uh, jetting and, and timing sweeps just to make sure that we've optimized the power output and that's what we did on this. So we wanted to make sure that we kind of got everything out of it that we could. After this, after this timing, after 38 degrees, it didn't really, really respond to anything. And we played with the jetting, uh, changed with the air fuel ratio, and, and it just wasn't terribly responsive. So this is the best combination we found. Now let's find out what happens after we installed the Nitrous. our naturally aspirated uh, 496 stroker we decided we were going to add the nitrous so we put the plate system on with the jetting to supply about 150 horsepower gain uh, might be 175 if we did everything just right and what we like to do before we run the nitrous is we will heat the bottle up west tech has a bottle heater that basically is a water bath that we heat the water bath up to like 100 or 105 degrees and then we could submerge the whole bottle the nice thing about that is you're not using the dangerous torch method because it heats one particular part of it this liquid bath kind of heats everything up and and we'll, we'll heat the bottle up and get it get the pressure to the right pressure obviously we fill the bottle to make sure that it's full and then on this one we installed 62 nitrous jets and 52 fuel jets on the plate system and the plate system usually works really well. So here's what happened. So our 496 made seven or 676 horsepower. Here's what happened when we installed our nitrous. Look at that. I mean, that's a good curve. If you can have the curve be consistent and have it look just like the NA curve does, that's when you know you've got your tune right. We pulled four degrees of timing out of this thing, and this was still run on 91 California gas, which obviously there are much better choices. Um, some of the guys will take the nitrous kit and they have they they plumb a second fuel system in and will run race gas just with the nitrous and that works. Um, or you could run race gas with all of it and not take the timing away. Maybe get a little bit more, but this is actually a pretty good power gain. So our power output jump with the nitrous jumped from 676 horsepower all the way up to 856 horsepower. So that's a nice gain from the nitrous. Uh, we hit it um, sometime after 5,000 RPM. You can hit it earlier than that and obviously gain more average power with the nitrous hit if you're accelerating the car. 
but you know 850 850 horsepower big block that's pretty stout and if you've got that in the right chassis and you can hook it up because that's one of the problems with big blocks is they make so much power it's hard to get them hooked up but if you can get this thing hooked up you're gonna run some pretty big numbers with this let's get to our conclusion okay guys what did you think personally i love this little 496 i think it does great it makes good average power and peak power and that's what big blocks excel at i mean we don't spend all our time at just one rpm when we're accelerating the vehicle, whether it's a Camaro or Chevelle or C10 truck, whatever it is, we accelerate through a gear, through an RPM range. And that's what big blocks excel at. They make plenty of average power. And this 496 did exactly that. It had good peak power, good average power, and even better power once we added the night. And that's the benefit of our multi-purpose build. It wasn't just dedicated for one thing. It allowed us to put power adders on. When we added the nitrous, we picked up a ton of power. I mean, that should be eight second power. What do you guys think? Let me know. But we're not done. Guess what? This is part one. In part two, we're gonna take a look at boost. We're gonna go a little old school and add a 671 roots blower. Then follow that up with a pro charger that makes even more power. That's right. Remember, multi-purpose build. We got the compression right. Everything's strong enough to take lots of boost. We're talking four digit power level. So stick around. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell. Thanks for watching. I'm Richard Holdner.